Hi, I'm Jake, one of the core developers in DJL team. In this video, we are going to introduce you ND Array. ND Array is multi-dimensional array class. It represents n dimension data, and each element has the same data type. But why do we create a new class instead of using the building Java array? Imagine if we are implementing reshape function. Reshape changes the shape of the ND array and how we interpret it. For example, if you have an ND array with four elements, one row, four columns, you can use reshape to describe the same ND array as three dimension, one, one, four, and even four dimension or more. As long as the total number of elements is the same, it can work. As you can see, we have to do tons of function overloading to cover different shape combinations. That is not realistic. Another reason is performance. If we want to implement add operations given a two dimension array, we can come up with this simple solution by using two for loop. It runs sequentially and doesn't fully utilize hardware resource. Actually, modern deep learning frameworks like TensorFlow PyTorch and Apache MXNet leverage lots of C++ libraries to accelerate computation. Those libraries like OpenBLAST, OpenMP, 1DNN, CUDA, QDNN have better hardware resource utilizations by using multi-threading or reducing cache mist. Instead of re-implementing ND array and its operations in Java, DJL take advantage of ND array class in those deep learning framework wrap around the C++ C++ API, and expose a user-friendly ND arrays to Java developers. I hope now you can understand why we create ND array class. Before we jump into ND array creation, let's talk about the metadata of an ND array. There are a bunch of getters. We will cover the most useful ones. Get data type returns the data type of this ND array. We have Boolean int32, int64, flow32, and float 64. Get shapes returns a shape object, which is a long array. Get device return where the memory of the ND array is in. It could be in CPU or GPU zero or GPU one, depending on how many GPUs you have in the machine. Size returns the total number of elements. To get the Java primitive array, just call two float array or two int array, depending on the data type. It copies the data from native C++ back to Java heap. Let's take a look at an examples. If we have this ND array with two row, two column, get data type return flow32, get shape return Java long array 22, get device is CPU. By default, we will use CPU if you don't have GPU. Size is four. Two flow array, you get one dimension Java flow array with all elements in the ND arrays, which is one, two, three, four. Generally speaking, Java developers should not worry about memory management, but this is not the case in DJL. You might notice that the real memory of an ND array is stored in native C++. Garbage collector doesn't have visibilities on native memory. We have to call a special API to free the native memory on our own. So we create another class called ND Manager that helps track the life cycle of an ND array. Every ND array has to be created by an ND Manager. When we call manager.close, it closes all the ND arrays that is attached, create by this manager. Let me demo how to create an ND array. Every ND array is created by an ND Manager. So we can instantiate an ND Manager by static method, new base manager and put it in the try block where it closes the managers after going out of scope. To create an ND arrays from Java primitive array, we can use create method and pass the Java array along with a shape. There are also several building methods to generate ND arrays with different data for you. Once method returns an ND array filled with one and you can specify the shape in arguments. Similarly, random uniform returns an ND array with uniform data that is between the low bound, high bound you can specify. 
Now we have an ND array. What operations we can do? Here are several operator categories. Element-wise op means the operator applies math operations on every element in the ND array. Let's say if we have an ND array, one, two, three, four, two rows, two columns. Call add two will add two to every element. EQ takes two ND arrays and compute equality element-wise. You will get an ND array with Boolean type. In this case, you will get four true elements. Reduction ops means the dimension of the output ND array become less after executing the operation. So here, max returns the max value within the ND array. In this case, ND array with only one element four. On the other hand, argmax returns the index of the max value, so it's three. Indexing, slicing, mutating up. This operator don't change the actual data, but the way we interpret the ND array like we shape and transpose. So here we can see the data is still one, two, three, four. But now we interpret it as one row, four columns. And for transpose, it reverse or permutes the axis of an ND array. Here, we read the column first, then row. So it's one, two, three, four. There are other operators that merge several rows on the array into one. Concat doesn't change the dimension of the input array, but state does. Here, we concatenate two on the array. By default, it concatenates on first dimension. So we got two plus two, four. But in stack, we get one more dimension. We get one result on the array that contains two array, each of which have two rows, two columns. Can we get the partial elements of on the arrays? Sure. Get methods accept a boolean on the array. We can pick the one that has true value and drop the one with false. Let's look at an example. A range is another on the array creation up. It generates the data from 5 to 14, but excluding 14 with step 1. GTE is comparison operator. It means greater than or equal to. So after calling get, we only get the elements that is greater than or equal to 10. Set method in examples takes an ND index and transformation function. Here, the ND index means we select all rows with only column one, which is two, five, eight here. After applying transformation function, we get four, 10, 16. Get method can also take ND index and set method can also take a value. Here are ND array and ND manager Java doc. They are examples for every operator and more details that we don't have time to cover. We also have one blog post talking about ND array. You can also join the Slack channel to ask questions. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again.